Mr. Modern Traveller expects speed, comfort, reliability, and the surest way you can get all three today is to fly. Of course, Mr. Modern Traveller is thinking of his own special journey. He thinks he's one in a million. BEA know he's one in over seven million. That's the number of people BEA transport every year, and nearly all those start here at BEA's London Gateway, the terminal in West London. realized they couldn't look after Mr. Modern Traveller's needs by sticking to the old ways. So they started to change things, and they started at the beginning, where BEA first meet the people in their care. In the old days, ticket reservations were made manually, a system of checking flights, times, and special requirements that was laborious and open to error. Nowadays, it's a different story. Good afternoon, BEA. Can I help you? Yes, indeed. Just a moment, please. We have one travel out on the second, for instance, and uh, then you would be entitled to a cheaper rate. So you can't really go until the be 18. BEA have automated the whole thing. Operators here cope with 10,000 calls a day, easily. Members of the public, travel agents, other airlines all put their inquiries through here. This is BEA's new nerve center. Yes, certainly, sir. Do you wish to travel to Orléans or Le Bourget? And what time do you wish to travel, sir? There's a flight leaving at 08.30, 100 hours. There's another flight leaving at 09.30. First class of tourists. And how many passengers are traveling, sir? What date? 14th of May. Just a minute, please. Yes, I can confirm one tourist class seat on flight B. The nerve center gives the instruction. Leaving London at 08. And the brain gives the answer. The brain is a computer, calculating in clinical calm on the floor below the booking hall. Its magnetic memory produces the answer at the push of a button. Where to? Where from? How long? And it memorizes all the new information for future reference. The brain gives the answer, and the voice gives the message. The GOAT for British European Airways, flight BE 568 to Zurich, will leave gate 11 in one minute. This is the final call for flight BE 568 to Zurich. And so, Mr. Modern Traveller, bound for Zurich, is on his way. VA christened their computer brainchild Beacon, and Beacon's got relations everywhere. In Belfast, Birmingham, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Manchester, Dublin, Amsterdam and Paris, all linked to London. Beacon gives computerized reliability on the ground. How is this matched in the air? In normal conditions, it's all high-speed routine. But what about abnormal conditions?
fog is the very worst of abnormal conditions. A grey, clammy, still life picture on the aprons. And a blue study in the lounges. Until recently, this has been a depressingly familiar scene for all air travellers. But now, a change is happening. And what is happening is this. Autoland. This box of tricks allows the Trident to land automatically. Inside is a computer, or rather three computers, each cross-checking the others, all automatically. It works like this. At about 2,000 feet, the Trident locks onto a beam transmitted from the runway. This will tell the aircraft how much left or right of the runway it is. At about a thousand feet, the pilot switches to auto land, and the Trident then follows a second beam which points it at the correct angle to the runway. During this time, all controls function automatically with the pilot keeping a close eye on the instrument. Sixty-five feet above the runway, and the throttles close. We're still tight on the glide path. Fifty feet. Forty. Thirty. And there's the runway. Twenty. Ten. Touchdown. That's what it's like up front, through fog with Autoland. But what about back here? They seem happy enough, and there's plenty to be happy about. The plane makers and the plane operators have made sure of that. The Hawker Sydney Trident was designed from the start for automatic landing, and on the BEA Tridents, it's a standard fitting. A standard fitting that's had to prove its absolute reliability. 99% sure is not enough. On a Hawker Sydney test rig at Hatfield, Autoland has been tested and retested. How the Autoland Trident will behave in the air is analyzed here on the ground. Already on the Trident, thousands of automatic landings have been made. The aim is to be able to fly even when the visibility is down to a hundred feet or less. During a typical test flight, a Hawker Sidley pilot gives the professional rundown. We are now lined up on the ILS beam uh, in line with the runway. We're descending down the glide path. We have completed the checklist, and as we have lowered the undercarriage and flaps, and made all the actions necessary to carry out an automatic landing. Ron Clear, one of our senior test pilots, is acting as co-pilot for this flight, and he is monitoring the performance of the system. Uh, normally, for an operational approach, uh, both pilots would be doing this job. At the moment, we are passing 450 feet on the radio altimeters, and this means that we have approximately a mile and a half to run to touchdown. The autopilot is controlling the airplane, the flight path of the airplane, and the automatic throttles on the two outboard engines are controlling the speed of the airplane. We're now passing 200 feet with three quarters of a mile to run. The landing will commence at 65 feet, at which point the throttles will close, and the autopilot will pitch the nose of the airplane up for the landing flare. The flare is now beginning, and we should very shortly be touching down round about now. A 
An airline coach on its way to the airport. Le Bourget Airport, Paris. Inside, the passengers, the usual cross-section of air travelers. Sophisticated regulars, once a year holiday makers. And some who've never flown before. A mixture, but they all have one thing in common. They want to get to London as quickly and as comfortably as they can, and on time. The weather looks good, so there's no problem. Or is there? Hope the car's waiting for me in London. Hope I'll make the five o'clock train. Hope I'll get my bags quickly the other end. Everyday thoughts that pass through the passenger's mind at every airport in the world. All are possible if the passenger gets there on time. The high-speed routine we were talking about seems to be functioning all right, and there's the plane, nearly ready to go. Yes, the Trident's there, the bags are on board, but the Parisian sunshine is a false deceiver. It's sunny here, but it's already foggy in England. And over at Heathrow, they're in the thick of it. But still the routine keeps going. Keeping going, or rather coming and going, is what's expected of a modern airline after all. Nevertheless, you're bound to worry that little bit more about the five o'clock connection, or the waiting wife, or the business dinner, if there's fog about. Fog is fog, and there's no disguise. This is the 1430 Paris flight due into Heathrow at 1520. One of 15 Paris to London flights every day. BEA is as keen on running those flights spot on time every time as each individual passenger on each individual flight. But in the past, Bad visibility at London Airport alone has meant hundreds of flights cancelled or disrupted every year. Anyway, aware of this statistic or not, the final passengers for the 1430 take their places on board their trike. Bojay Tower, this is Beeline Golf, Alfa Romeo, Papa Victor. Trident on a flight to London Airport, requesting taxi clearance. Over. Line Papa Victor, this is Le Bourget. You are clear to taxi the runway 25, QNH 1016. Over. Uh, Roger from Papa Victor. Still right on schedule. They're well over the channel now, and the weather doesn't look too bad. 
Perhaps those French Met people got it wrong. It's happened before. Or perhaps the fog's cleared quickly. It looks pretty good from where we're sitting. It may look pretty good to the passengers, but what about up there on the flight deck? Well, the French Met certainly weren't exaggerating. Just got the weather, Captain, from London. 400 metres, sky obscured, and a little wind from the west. Looks as though the fog's thickening as forecast. Yeah. In fact, uh, real auto land weather. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few minutes now, we shall be landing in London. Would you please extinguish your cigarettes and ensure that your seatbelts are fastened for landing? Approaching Heathrow, and it's pretty thick down there. But Papa Victor, with 77 passengers at Autoland on board, is on time. Papa Victor, clear to land. London radar, beeline Golf off Romeo Papa Victor, requesting your latest weather, over. Papa Victor, under the London weather, surface wind, calm, visibility 200 meters, deteriorating, sky obscured, QFE 1008 millibars, over. Roger from uh, Feline Papa Victor, request auto land approach onto runway 28 left, over. Papa Victor, care for auto land approach, runway 28 left, over. Uh, Roger from Papa Victor, I'll call you established on the beam, over. Selecting prime glide. And beam switch up, waiting for the localizer. Beam indication. Speed reducing to 160. Radar, this is Beeline Papa Victor established on the beam. Call it the outer marker inbound. Over. Papa Victor on the radar. Roger. Up. One sixty knots. Flight path moving. Half a division selecting full flap. Capturing the glide. Speed reducing to 150. Papa Victor is now the outer marker inbound. Papa Victor, London car, you're going to land runway 28 left, over. Roger from Papa Victor. Time land selecting. Two hundred feet. If you're coming down, Ted, I can't see a thing yet. 100 feet, green lights. 65 feet, throttle's closing. I have control. Touching down now. Auto pilot out. Reverse thrust. Reverse thrust. Trying the brake. Air brake jack. And so here we are in London. Just routine, as we said. Another auto land homecoming. Speed, Papa Victor's been cruising at just under 600 miles an hour. Comfort, it comes built into all Tridents. Reliability, Papa Victor has shown that Autoland reliability is top reliability. Plenty of time to catch that train. Plenty of time for that dinner date. Plenty of time, plenty of time. BEA is treating Autoland as a long-term project. During the 70s, passenger inconvenience through poor flying conditions will be almost eliminated. Nothing attracts passengers more than an airline that can operate in fair weather or foul. To know you can fly when you want to fly. By using automated systems on the ground and in the air, BEA continues as number one airline in Europe.